Hey guys, yeah, that's me. I know what you're thinking, but no, I didn't actually pause the footage. You see, this all really happened, and that's a real number. 987,921,909,034. That's how much health remained after I hit him once. Now, I don't expect you to care about this yet, because it's important to see the process. I need to just get a general understanding of what the fuck you're looking at. This is Noida. And Noida is probably a bit foreign to you. Finnish even. But worry not, brave viewer, whether or not you've played or heard of Noida. I will help you. Now, if you have a question about anything in this video, let me know below and I'll do my best to answer it because there's probably going to be some confusing shit. So with that in mind, focus or the knowledge I bequeath upon you will be lost to the There I was, once again, streaming my attempts to create a dark sun on the hell moon. In hell, of course. Things had not been going well. I kept encountering this strange issue with my character, making this weird sound. Let me out! That's the sound. Firebolt. Plus one board. Plus 25 max health. Nice. Welcome to Noida, where you kick this cart to signify yes. the beginning of your journey. But ahoy! God had blessed this run! And thus begun my pacifistic tendencies. Now I'm gonna explain pacifism real quick here. Long story short, I didn't kill him. That barrel did. The barrel kill count here is three. While I didn't kill anything. Pacifist. Plus 25 health. Nice. Things were looking pretty up. I was going fast. I had the zimmy, so I was drinking acceleradium and everything. But there was something weird. I hadn't taken any damage at all yet. But I was ready. I was poised to explore the entirety of the underground. The mines here can get pretty expansive and you can find a lot of really useful things. My lofty aspirations for the first stage cut wildly short, but pacifism paying out hugely with a teleport bolt. Teleport bolt was gonna get me out of the shop without having it break, which you'll see shortly. But more importantly, I couldn't afford anything else and it was all I had. And it was fantastic to have. Now a couple things happened in this shop. One, slime blood. Really cool perk, turns my blood into slime. I no longer bleed blood, but I bleed slime and slit. I also get some projectile resistance and slime no longer slows me down. A pretty cool perk. Two, I got teleport bolt from the pacifism chest, which allows me quite a bit of freedom in going to and fro the shop to yoink spell. And on account of the furniture, I'm going for pacifism again. I have not yet crafted a wand, therefore I will not get into wand crafting yet. For this level, all I truly needed was my feet. My feet and furniture are the strongest tools a wizard can use. Sure, this shit may have been beaten out of me, but I like being a pacifist. And I definitely like being rewarded for my pacifism. I grabbed Trick Greed to get even more money from pacifist kill. And so, being over incentivized to continue my pacifistic route, I did. And nothing could have prepared me for how well the next stage was about to go. It started out interestingly by dropping an ice shelf on an entire crowd of people out of sight, making nearly a million dollars. From there, it got a little increasingly chaotic, but I managed to shimmy my way out of some terrifying situations and generally scary scenarios where you could die in one instance. But yeah, that's just Noida. Like I even got to watch a worm die this run. Like I didn't participate in like the act of killing it. It just kind of burned alive in front of me. Anyways, another pacifism chest for me. I got an invisibilium potion. Cool. Didn't like the perks, so I decided to reroll. Gambling. Two perks for the price of one. What's the gamble? Some perks do not mix well. Oh, wow. However, this time I got electricity immunity and extra wand capacity. So this shop was already nuts. But then I got even more. Ping pong path, recharge on one wand. What are these words though? Do they mean anything? Yes! Hi. Up until now, you'll have noticed that I have only used my feet. Also, you're probably noticing this pretty cool crown I've got on. But the crown doesn't matter. What matters is that I need to start using magic. And I need to explain how magic works. So very quickly, here's the basics. For now, we have spells, modifiers, and multicasts. Modifiers modify spells. Multicasts allow you to cast more than one spell at a time per cast state. Spells are magic. The cast state is the box that the wand has picked to cast. 
In this wand's case, it's a shuffle wand, so it's entirely random which selection is going to be made. A no shuffle will go left to right until every spell has been gone through. When a modifier is selected, it'll look for a spell in the next box over to apply itself to, finishing the cast state. When the final spell in the wand is cast, it'll go into a sort of cooldown state called the recharge. As long as your wand has the mana requirement before firing in the frame that it's cast, the cast will succeed. Now normally, these numbers here would mean something. 0.13 seconds between casts, plus or minus any cast delay from the projectile being cast. 0.42 seconds to recharge the wand to be able to fire again after casting the last spell. Total mana available, the rate of mana charging, the slots available on the wand, the degree of error when firing. Again, normally this would mean something, but chainsaws are interesting, but you'll see it soon. Don't worry, I'll be coming back to help guide you, because Noida's got a lot going on, and I honestly... Naturally, my intent was to continue my pacifist rap, but I did craft that chainsaw wand I explained moments ago. The Heesey base, a terrifying place filled with Heesey. Men, lots of men, and this time, ghosts. Unbeknownst to me at the time, but ghosts can see you when you're invisible. So let's jump into this stream. Oh, the ghost got me. Oh, shit, that's spooky. Oh, fuck. Sad to say, everybody, but pacifism is finally over. That's a happy man. But why? While this is essentially a randomized wand, the stats are all very good for where I'm at. It also has an accelerating homing always cast modifier. And it's full of glue. I'd show you more of the Heesey base, but most of it kind of went as expected in my current form. And eventually I ventured onward to the next shot. 28 health? Okay, I'll leave. Oh, shop, my beloved. Oh, it's so good to be in you again. Now, you're not gonna see a lot of it in this video, as I'll be editing a lot of it out, but I do a lot of tinkering. Because tinkering with wands is how you learn. It's how you do silly things. You can, you can do whatever you want. As long as the game doesn't crash. Basically, I fuck around and find out a lot. I mean, and I die a lot. Did you know you can eat glue in Noida? the entire ore for maximum even. I think I got too sick, to be honest. I'm eating too much vomit. After unsuccessfully getting blazed on glue, I crafted up a nice little wand to get me through the next area. Also, I got explosion immunity. Teleport out to keep the shop intact, and I was on my way. My methods were simple. New wand, get back to the shop, strip wand of the goods, head back out, making sure to kill anything that moved in my local vicinity. I left this heart because I didn't want it yet. It was during this casual genocide that I realized my wand was stronger than I had initially thought. My chainsaws would essentially function like they previously did as long as I kept the trigger held down. I figured I was ready to fight the dragon. Alright, so Dragon Boss is gonna get mad, he's gonna come for me, I'm gonna be like, brother, I am so sorry, I have to do this to you. Yeah, that's right, I unplugged the VHS. Copy trail, pretty useful. Definitely gonna see it, but that's not why I'm here. I'm here to tell you about Spells to Power, a very cool spell. But first, I'll show you this bubble. Five. One bubble, five damage. But what about six bubble? Spells to Power converts any projectiles nearby into flat damage. Now, the cool thing about this modifier is that it doesn't just add the damage from spells, it adds all the modifiers as well. This modifier, Heavy Shot, adds 44 damage while slowing down a projectile. But we get to subvert all that with Spells to Power. So, this gets 44 damage onto six different projectiles. That all converted into damage onto the next projectile with spells to power is 297.5 damage. It's a little hard to show it because you're not seeing the projectile really out there just because the cast delay is so short. But what if I did a couple extra little... There we go. And that's 
how spells to power work. Oh, there's so much more to teach you. Oh boy. Oh, we gotta get going here though. Now let's let's get back into it. So immediately after killing the dragon, I went down to the next shop. Didn't like the perks, decided to reroll. And that was the right decision, baby! Steve can suck my wizard cock and ball! Sorry if you're out of the loop on Steve, he's the shopkeep. Or God. He's got a big version. I have not made him mad yet. And I don't really need to. Cause this picked up heels in the shop, securing once again an incredibly important thing for the long run. There's finally time to move on, and you know what? Fuck the shop. I don't need it. I can edit my wands anywhere now, and that means one very important thing. I can strip wands wherever I am. So gathering spells is no longer a chore, merely a task. As the introduction to the new zone would suggest, the vault is a very dangerous place. Now I do have lightning immunity, and I do have explosion immunity, so remarkably safe compared to if I did not have those. I say this because in Noida you are never truly safe. Not ever. For instance, there's this guy that blinds you for 19 seconds if you get hit. Yeah, Noida's pretty fun, but no matter how much I tested the limits, my hubris could not be punished to a degree where I would die. See that heart? No, I'm not getting it yet, because I want a red man. I'm not gonna find one. So I'll get it later. I already had plans. The plan? Teleport into a pool of lava to frighten the chat and myself. So far, every plan I had going was working flawlessly. Truly, I was free. Free to do whatever the hell I wanted mm, one without chest. immediate fear of death. And my god, that's a powerful feeling in Noida. Yeah. The last shot before the bottom floor. I picked up the fashion projectiles perk because it's generally pretty helpful. Then I did a little bit of tinkering in the shop while I had some free time. Check it out. We finally arrived at the Temple of the Art. The last main biome we have to go through to get to the bottom. The temple went about the same as the vault. However, in the temple, I finally found some wand and I got to do shit. I got to do my favorite thing in Noida. Experimentation. The temple definitely got a little hairy. But in due time, I made it to the bottom, as expected. Bottom believers are where you at. This is merely the prediction that me and my community use to gamble. Can Ross make it to the bottom from the beginning? The bottom being the figurative endpoint of the general biome structural, because uh, past that is infinite. There is no bottom. The bottom is a figurative term, meaning the laboratory shop. We're not even close to being done. Mind you, we could be done. We could go kill the boss and be done. But no, not today. Because today, we're making a, a big black hole in hell. Did I, did, have I talked about that? It's not important yet. But it will be. Kind of. Because for now, I'm returning to the surface. I need to go fight a man. And another man. But they're more ball than man. After about 20 minutes of various exploring, burrowing upwards, and annihilating enemies beyond recognition, I had returned to the third biome. If I headed directly to the right, I could come across this chasm where I could easily get two boar. One boar. Right here. To the left. In the chasm. And another one above. But I regret to inform you that this one can come at a bit of a cost. Hey. Ah, uh, this, uh, this is Squidward. He's, uh, he's about to show up and die. But I, uh, I may have goofed this one. Just a little. You see, Squidward copies projectiles. And lucky me, a straight teleport bolt has just slowly placed itself right in front of him. Right as I hit him with this belt. Let's jump in, shall we? Hello, Squid! What the fuck? See? This is why I explained it beforehand. Although it's possible that I'm exaggerating a little. Like, I don't know, I'm desensitized to this. I've done this like a million times. I didn't realize I fucked this one up so badly. I got a new one, pretty good. Good enough to merit some tinkering. Then it was on to the next immediate goal. Directly to the left, through a dark passageway, lies the ancient laboratory. 
the ancient lab is full of enemies, mainly alchemists and wizards, and while not necessarily a threat at the moment, they did distract me quite a bit, and I did forget about the alchemists. Welcome me back. You're never free from my education. Couple arbitrary things. You cannot divide a... Wait, no. That's not now. We don't need that. Um, a Greek letter functions through other spells on a wand. The two immediately useful things you can get out of this is unlimited black holes and healing. This purple circle. This instantly recharges a wand and everything after is ignored. Very useful. Game it. Gamma will cast the last spell slotted into a wand. Convenient. Omega. Omega casts everything, even other letters, at the cost of decreased CPU performance. Finally, there's Mew, which casts every modifier on the wand in one instance, essentially doubling them up. I hope you're doing okay out there. I'm gonna... The alchemist was dead. I had great spells, a lot of modifiers. I had a good amount of variety and a lot of options. So I decided it was time. To play guilty game. Did I fucking die? There it is. Oh. New day. The run had resumed. After a quick crash, I made my way up the left wall of the world. Omega is a fickle beast, but I was learning to control it. Noida goes on forever. There is no end. Only more parallel worlds. Parallel worlds are almost identical to the main world with some minor differences and entirely new perks. So basically, you can gather and stack a plethora of perks as you travel across parallel worlds to the east or west. Each parallel world is separated by about three screens of cursed rock. Even if you don't touch it, you take damage. And if you touch it, you take a bunch of damage, steadily. Just moments ago, you saw me bleed bunches of slime. Oh my gosh, you guys finally get to meet Steve. Steve is a very particular man. He does not like it when the shop has holes in it. Personally, I do. And that's why we don't get along. So after some Steve aside, I did what I often do and accidentally jumped in a portal to return to the main world. I was feeling a little weak, so I decided to make my way over towards the tower. And then I accidentally dug into the Lucky Lair and decided to just wand hunt here for a while. The Lucky Lair is a very normal and not scary place filled with very normal enemies that are not scary. Some speedy searching in this not spooky at all location netted me some useful spells. And at the end of the lucky lair, a board. Nice. And so I left. And then by sheer chance, I happened upon perhaps the most wonderful thing in all of Noida. The friend room. Last time this happened, I tried to take them on a quest. Don't worry, I didn't kill them this time. I'm about to enter the tower. 
The tower is a bunch of biomes stacked on top of each other, deep underground, surrounded by cursed rock, which effectively isolates you. Welcome, welcome, fellas. You come at a good time. Oh, look at the fungus. Up the tower I climb, slowly but steadily, safely. And after just a bit of looking for one, I came across one finally! The red man sends out a ball that reduces the max health of anything it hits by half. So, by continuously getting hit by this and reducing our max health, I then go pick up a bonus heart to increase my max health from where it's currently at. Which doesn't take into account the debuffs I have on. So, if you have a debuff that reduces your max health by 50%, and it goes away? What happened? Your health doubles! I was now extra comfy. And so upwards I continued through the rest of the tower. Child's play for a wizard like me. I was cruising now. I went straight up to the top and arrived at the tower wands. Nice. I picked up the wand of multitudes and left through the side of the tower. Straight through the curse rock. Bunch of health now. It's really nice. Wait a minute. Wait, no, 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 I know this place, but I haven't been and I haven't unlocked it yet. Hmm. Luckily, I knew exactly what had to be done. The Leviathan had to be killed. So, I made my way directly to the left, across the world, into the side of the lake. And with my handy dandy liquid detonation modifier, my black holes now purged water into little explosions. Which was good, because as a wizard, I currently have the ability to drown. But, I'm immune to explosions. Through the lake I searched before reaching the bottom, realigning with the middle, and finally coming across the big man himself. I think that's him. And as it turns out, I could not yet kill him. What? Even the gas from thousands of propane tanks was not enough to damage this giant beast. Try as I may here, I was not succeeding. Not at all. But it looked pretty funny. <laughs> What did I need? These are weakeners. Modifiers. This is a deer. These are modifiers that reduce the resistance of a damage type. They get hit with it, they get debuffed. That's how it goes. And so I needed to venture out and get these onto a new quest. And so once again, I was off to parallel worlds and beyond. And almost immediately, I got the best healing in the game, followed by one of the four spells I was looking for. Bungus zone, be praised. I grabbed another quick board and made my way back to the big man. Portals! <laughs> Fucking finally! Not knowing where these portals went, I haphazardly decided with bottom right and went straight to hell. Free Borb, though. Free Borb. Not the best portal. Wouldn't recommend. Anyways, I went back up and took another one. This one put me under the pyramid. Nearby the Bungus Zone. And as if guided by the gods themselves, I went to search in the Bungus Zone. I finally netted a piercing spell, which is unbelievably sick and necessary. But why? Piercing. Makes a projectile fly through enemies, but harmful to the caster. It also reduces the damage done. Very cool thing, because you get to do this. Trigger spells are very neat. Basically, it just casts the spells. This spell is homing in and forever hitting it on every frame, casting two chainsaws every time. And I think that's great. Probably could have gone over the trigger spells earlier, but whatever. I mean, you see it. This is pretty cool, right? Anyways, it's time for another boss. As it is, I'm looking for Tiny. In this instance, it took me a while to find what I was looking for. I was looking for a specific landmark. Okay, I got the bone. I got a big bone. There's the skull. Ah, fucking hell, man. I was close. Oh, sweet God. Oh, 
That was tiny. Just a little guy. Let's go get another big spell. Divide by 10. I'm gonna grab this little cursed perk by the starting zone. After grabbing this cursed perk, I'm going to fly high speed across the sky, across the map, over, all the way, over to the pyramid. So I can dig directly down, straight into the town. Now that I'm here, I can plop myself into the Diamond of Avarice and voila, divide by 10. Without getting into detail yet, divide by 10 is sick. And we're absolutely gonna need it by the end, but for now, not so much. It's important to note that Cool Math Games was right. Cool Math is game. I did have a little problem though. I was still cursed. It didn't go away, but no matter. I had business with another parallel world and an alchemist. I wanted more letters. I craved the Greek alphabet. So straight down to the alchemist I went and here we go. After avoiding too much cursed rock buildup, I made my way to pick up these letters and I made sure to grab every single one. With that out of the way, I could get rid of my curse. Easily done in an intact shop you haven't been to. Then of course came the Steve aside. There were lots of Steves. They just kept coming. One by one they came. None stronger than the last. All dead. It was great. I got a bunch of perks. <sighs> Many Steves died by my hand. There's no Steve. Not even Big Steve was a match for me. Park Lottery, a 50% chance for perks to not vanish when you pick one up. Swell. Time was continuing to pass me by. The localized atmosphere of my stream and the endless mental engagement stemming from the sheer vastness of creative potential one can bring forth on the funny wizard game had me captivated. And I had 10 boards. 10 boards is the amount of orbs I needed. 10 orbs to get into new game plus to a comp- So yeah, I was off to fight Colmy. And after that last bit of travel, bit of tinkering, bit of prep, I was ready to fight the first Colmy Schmilman. Big guy from the thumbnail. He does not have a trillion health yet. In fact, he only has... 68,059 health. Nice. During this fight, I kind of had a little bit of an issue. My wand wasn't working as I envisioned it. So, I made one little change. An Anoida, one tiny change, can make an insanely big difference. The platform make it all weird? Maybe the ping pong pass was necessary. It's very possible. I don't know, I got him with the gravity field though. He's just fucked. The With Colmy obliterated, I was ready for New Game Plus, but I wanted to do more. I wanted to feel comfy and cozy and safe. But most of all, I wanted to make a dark sun on the Hell Moon. And so I continued my silly little tasks. Down to the Magic Temple. I'm looking for the Master of Masters. I need his spells for later and to make the rest of this easier. This is one of the more nuanced fights in Noida, where you actually have to do shit. Basically, I have to shoot these purple orbs. If I hit the red orbs, I do damage directly to myself. So prior to this, I made a wand that was relatively tame that wouldn't kill me with my 6,500 health. Strongled. After that boss, I killed another boss. Yeah, there's a lot of bosses in this game. After this, it was time to get a little more perked up in some parallel worlds. I even turned blood into slime. Not intentionally. I killed a bunch of Steves, took a little early visit to the Hell Moon, and eventually I picked up my eyeball in the main world. Time to take this to the bottom of the ice chasm. I needed the eyeball to fight the boss that drops the sun baby, which I'm going to show you right here. But basically, I'm gonna toss the eyeball up so I can shoot him. And it's as easy as that. The sun seed did go flying, but I did find it. Voila, sun baby fetus has been created. Now I gotta bring this little guy up to the top of the pyramid. 
place him down. He undergoes a little bit of an evolution. And there we go. Now, water, earth, whiskey, air. I turned all the essences into rocks. I needed these for the sun. Down to hell! Let the sun feed us with at least 10 simultaneous explosives to make a real alive ball. There go the lightning rocks! They've probably fallen, but hey, good news, guys. After almost losing everything, I fed the sun 100 souls as fast as I could. In due time, another transformation occurred. It's getting a little messy. I had all the rocks here, but revenge tentacle blocked my shit rock, and it fell down, and I couldn't find it. And that was the one rock I couldn't get again. So anyways, I created a normal sun, which is now what I wanted. Somewhat dejected, I finished up for the day, headed to the top, and started New Game Plus. Congratulations, guys. You've made it. I've made a river of blood. Oh, God. You've made it. We're in the final stretch, and Big Comey will soon be upon us. That's for you watching, of course. It's still like 12 hours away from me here, sadly. Not an exaggeration, this game's very silly. Noid of tier list until I die. First up, Omega Saw Blade. A tier. Start. After about an hour and a half of sauntering around the New Game Plus world, killing everything inside, I finally found my first boar. Then came the second, the crash, then the third, the fourth. Morbs were being acquired at an okay to moderately slow pace. I was using this convenient map to reference the location that was possible for each boar broom to spawn. A small detour occurred when I acquired the spell of spells though. A spell better than all spells, because it makes more spells. Summon Taika Suava. Taika, Taika Suava? Taikaswaba, I'm gonna possess wine to aid me. Normally, that is what it does. Okay, so yeah, I mean, yeah, you just summon a friend. They're a little aggressive. Oh god, they keep sticking it to me. Oh god. Oh jeez. Oh good. Oh, they killed each other. You can see that they dropped gold, right? Well, I found a good way to use that. Huh. I'm back, check these wands out. With a bit of a variable success rate of generating or not generating a wand, I basically had a big money machine. Anyways, the money part doesn't really matter. I just wanted you to watch me swim through piles of money. It's pretty cool. With my now infinite pile of spells, I created a nice little travel wand that the gods would be proud of. But I need you to get ready, everyone, because it's actually almost time. We're at the amalgamation of these several days of streams. From four orbs to 32 orbs, it took me about seven hours. And now it's very possible that I lost my mind a little during this whole process. Look at them mess so happy together, but um, square! I was still one orb short of my 33 requirement. One more orb. And I just for the life of me could not figure out which one I had missed. And nor could the chat. Frankly, nobody had any idea. We thought it was done. We were gonna have to we we're gonna have to hack it in so you just have a chance to fight the boss. But I was hopeful still, because I had a chatter's advice and experience. And through that, I had a workaround. I had to go look at the save file to see which number of orb was missing from a orbs found this run section in the save file. Very specific. Lo and behold, the final orb was found. Thanks, Data. Eight and a half hours. That is how long it took me to find these 33 orbs in the new game plus. That is not including all the other time it took to get here. <laughs> You can do it so much faster in a number of ways. And next time, I'm gonna use a parallel world one. But fellas, I'm excited. I only have one thing left to do. 
and that is to take out the monstrosity known as 33 Bob Combsmilm Combsmilm. The fight did not go at all as planned. In fact, there were a plethora of issues and crashes caused by me. Guys, what can I say? This is it. It's Combsmilm. It's finally time for you to see the absolute destruction that I have created and brought upon this ball. Hmm. And then I tried again, and I did get the game to crash. I got the game to crash a few times, actually, overall. But each failure of a wand or each crash didn't mean much, because every time I didn't die, I had another try. Eventually, my brain kind of folded into itself. Iterations upon iterations of minor changes to make a wand capable of doing a trillion damage had gotten me here. None of them had worked yet, but I was convinced that not only could I find a way to do it, but I could find a way to do it with the spells I had on hand. I have the knowledge, but do I have the capacity to use that knowledge to my utmost advantage? And so, I took another shot with this one. And I can explain how this one works, but I'll save myself the trouble, because it didn't. Oh, 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 oh. Sure, a failure, but the best I've done so far. The thing is, that shot gave me the biggest brain blast of all. I was misusing a thing that would make a huge difference. Watch closely. Couple more. I'm just gonna move that right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah! yeah! Well, let's take a look at the change I've made. Three very minor changes, two of which will make all the difference. So ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Trillion Health Boss. Now here, I've already fired the wand. It took a full minute and 45 seconds to fire. And then finally. There we go. Anyways, he wasn't dead yet, so I had to shoot him again. This gave me enough time to explain my one to chat and why that tiny change worked. But all you guys need to know is that I cast a bunch of chainsaws that did a lot of damage. I thought about explaining it more in depth, but you know what? It doesn't matter. That math isn't gonna check out unless you take into account every single perk I have. And you know what? Just know that it was enough. I had finally done it. 1500 hours later, I got the kill and I made the thumbnail real. The world would be restored. Now, weirdly enough, I ended up having two samples in my inventory, which is the thing I picked up to start the boss fight. I did not know this when I was going to finish the game, but it definitely affected how the game ended. And we'll see that shortly. Enjoy. The end of the 33 more Colmish Milmaron. We fucking got it! Fucks and go! Fucks and go! I don't think everyone's much happier. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I don't know if everyone is happier with a lot of toxic gold. <laughs> Why did I get toxic gold 33 orbs? Normally this would be regular gold, but because I had two samples, I guess it's toxic. I don't know, it doesn't matter. It was just very funny. And then finally, after a dedicated effort, I was able to kill myself. Uh, it took a long time. There it is. But you'll never be able to stop me from killing myself. Saving Grace, you better fucking stop save. Um. Listen up, everybody. Thank you so much for watching 
all the way through. Holy crap. If you made it this far, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe. Turn on those notifications. Twitch is imploding itself, guys, and I think I'm gonna start streaming on YouTube soon, right on this channel. There's no sponsor. I'm the sponsor. Support me however you can, if you feel. I appreciate everybody watching my content, and I hope to keep reviving in the future. No idea what's coming next. See you next time!